We've reached the last video in our partial derivatives section, and this video is about Clairaut's theorem, or also known as the mixed derivative theorem. So this theorem says that if f of xy and its partial derivatives f sub x, f sub y, f sub xy, and f sub yx are defined throughout an open region containing a point AB and are all continuous at AB, then f sub xy at AB is equal to f sub yx at AB. And this can sometimes make our calculation a lot easier. So I'm going to give you an example of when it would make it a lot easier to switch your order that you're doing your derivative. So in this example it says find partial squared of f over partial x partial y if f of xy equals xy to the fourth plus cosine of y plus three over e to the y plus y squared. Okay now this is the derivative with respect to y first. So what, what, the way we would do that usually is the partial derivative with respect to x of the partial of f with respect to y. And notice that if we did that, this cosine of y plus 3 over the quantity e to the y plus y squared would be a really complicated derivative to do. We would have to use our quotient rule. And whenever possible, it's nice if we can avoid that. So um, since e to the y plus y squared is never equal to 0, and that's our denominator, and of course we cannot divide by 0. So since that's never equal 0, f is continuous on all of R2. So all ordered pairs x, y, um, our function is continuous. Also, the partial derivatives are defined. And so, by Clairaut's theorem, we can switch the order of derivation. So remember, Clairaut's theorem says your function has to um, be defined and continuous, and the partial derivatives have to be defined and continuous at a particular point, and we're just saying that this function is defined and continuous at every point in R2, and so are its partial derivatives. So we can just switch the order to partial squared f over partial x partial y. That was our original order. We're going to switch it to partial squared f over partial y partial x. So this is the partial derivative with respect to y of the partial derivative with respect to x of x y to the fourth plus cosine of y plus three over e to the y plus y squared. Now I wrote everything in involving the y in blue because we consider those constants with respect to x. So this whole um, quotient cosine of y plus 3 over e to the y plus y squared is just one big constant, so its derivative is going to be 0. And the y to the fourth is a constant multiple, so it will just come along for the ride times the derivative of x. So we get the partial derivative with respect to y of 1 times y to the fourth and then again the derivative of that big y term, the constant term, is 0. So now it's an easy derivative. Derivative of y to the fourth with respect to y is 4y cubed and we're done. Now we had um, the option of doing it the other way and using the quotient rule but it would have just been a lot more work. So Clairaut's theorem can save you a lot of work. So here's our next example. Given f of xyz equals x squared times cosine of y cubed plus z squared, why do we know 
that f sub z y y x x x equals zero without doing any calculations. So this is another example of where we can apply Clairaut's theorem. And we know that since our function f of x, y, z is continuous on all of R3, and the partial derivatives are defined and continuous, we can switch the order of derivation by Clairaut's theorem. And so we can say f sub z, y, y, x, x, x equals f sub x, 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 z, y, y. So I just switch the order. So now I'm doing the third derivative with respect to x first. And we know that the third derivative of x squared is 0. Since this is multiplied to the rest of the function, we get f sub x, x, x equals 0 times cosine of y cubed plus z squared, which is just 0, and the remaining three der derivatives are irrelevant since the derivative of 0 is 0. So that's a couple examples of when you might want to apply Clairaut's theorem, switching your order of um, which variable you're deriving with respect to first. Just make sure you check your conditions first. Your function has to be continuous and defined at whatever point you're um, doing this at, doing the derivative at, and your um, derivatives all have to be continuous and defined at that point. If it's um, continuous and defined at all points in a certain region, that's great because then you can just switch the general order like we did in these examples.